Okay. Hey guys, uh, a lot of you already know me. My name's Mark Poston. Uh, I'm the head football coach at Rockbridge County High School uh, in uh, Lexington, Virginia. Uh, prior to that, uh, I was the head football coach at Eastern Montgomery High School uh, in Shawsville, Virginia. And today I'm going to talk to you about some more of the newer things or newer trends that we're exploring at Rockbridge High School in, in the run and shoot. Uh, and specifically, if you could see on our board here, uh, I want to give a shout out to at Coach Banstra. Uh, Coach Banstra has been really good to me and has his website and does great things on Twitter. And we were able to get connected and, uh, and uh, 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 here I am today. But some of the things that we're going to talk to you about today uh, and, and, and things that have been good for us is integrating some West Coast uh, concepts uh, in, into the basic run and shoot. A lot of times when I talk either on our website, uh, on Facebook, the 60Z Go website, or I talk at clinics or whatever, it's principally on the base shoot, uh, you know, slide, hook, uh, choice, uh, streak, switch, read, all that. But I want to talk to you today about some of the newer things that we're going uh, into, uh, specifically ways to integrate our running back into the passing game, which all really good West Coast teams uh, um, did. And that, that part of the West Coast offense that I always liked, where the running back would catch 40 to 50 balls in a season. Uh, we're going to talk about the shallow and, and some drive concepts, some things that we're doing and how we're taking run and shoot concepts and applying them to empty, the empty formation, which we're really delving into now. Uh, we're just like a lot of you guys, uh, the state of Virginia, we're not slated to get back into it until February. Uh, it'll be a complete experiment for us. It already is in many ways. Uh, Virginia in February can be really cold. So we'll see how it works. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it without further ado. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is some simple, easy ways that you can get your running back involved in the run and shoot. And a couple of the ways that we do it, and I hope you guys can see this, is we will take a play. Um, let's say for us we're going to take the divide play, Okay. And ball's on the hash. Here's the far hash. Okay. And we're going to run an S under. We're going to run 960. The nine tells everybody that it's a low to high progression, that the running back is the number one option. Uh, this is a great third and eight call. This is a great third and extra long call as well. We're going to run 960. Z divide. S under. Okay. So we got our 60 protection for the line. All right. And, and I'm not going to draw defense. I'm going to give you an opportunity to look at it. So the quarterback is coming out on his 60 drop. All right. We got the divide concept. So he can either post it or dig it. He's on a seam read one yard outside the hash. He's going to be at a hookup between 8 to 10 if the corner's off. And if he gets into him, he's taking it up. Now, what you could see is that this there's going to leave a tremendous area right here. Because the defenses of today are all reading. And there's no immediate running back in the backfield. So they're going to carry. They're principally going to carry with either number three. If it's a 4-3 setup where the Sam is on the inside, corners outside, and strong safety sitting there, and they're playing two read off of two, now if they're playing two read, the corner sees two go vertical, so he's locked on one. The number two's on the strong safety. The Sam is going to collision three. So that gives us a great opportunity to get the running back involved in the 960 S under. And what, what the running back's going to do 
is he is free releasing and he is looking for an avenue in this a gap to that a gap to run the under so a lot of times versus man third and eight third and nine you can catch a team in man which we did uh, three different times last year okay and this guy right here will be wide open and the z corners run off the strong safety's off the sam is off all right so once again just giving you an idea of how to get the running back open so that's the under concept okay now we can apply basically that same concept once again versus man where we will now run and i'm going to put where we will go 960 z go s pick all right we're, we're now we are going to pick the nickel okay excuse me guys it's not z go it's just 960 z pick my bad he's gonna pick the sam out on the corner and we're out right there that would be principally a goal line play for us okay uh if you get the sam up and in we're going to pick if it goes to in in we're going to pick the nickel the running backs out okay and i mean it is what it is it's a pick okay so that's a way another way to get the running back out that's under and that's pick now here's another really good one that we like to use against teams that will run quarters and we're all starting to see it if you live in a 10 personnel world like we do you're starting to see a lot of quarters and we've actually changed our identification of linebackers we go mike sam nickel so this is what we see and in fact one of the top teams that we play gives us this and it, it's tough where the mike and the sam are both out in 50 alignments the nickel is over top of two the strong safety is over top of three we will go 561 x choice s option where we will now run an option route on this singled up linebacker when the x here's the s option it is an automatic go or post he has to clear it out he has to clear it out okay he will post it versus one high he will take it up versus two high what that will allow us to do is now we're coming out here in our 61 drop now we're going to square up on that mic and we're breaking to the flat okay if it's some type of read defense where the corner is going to sink and jump it we might get lucky and hit the whole shot okay if the mic over trails the play we're going to come out we're going to put our foot in the ground and we're going to whip it back underneath okay so i'm giving you three ways with under picks and options to get the football to your running back that you can consistently do okay now he knows he's got to set it down over the ball he's on a scene read he's off okay but this is the guy that we want to get the football to 561 x choice s option we want to put that mic <coughs> who might be great in run game responsibility but maybe not he might be in the shenandoah valley he might be 6'1", 225, 6'1", 230. And you can get him matched up on a running back that's 185 
on a sprint to the sideline. And we'll take that every time. And I'll be honest with you, we don't run that play enough. Now, it does not have to just be with – you can change up whatever you want to on the back side. If you find out that your spacing is not good with this, run it as an X-Choice special – where now he's taking the top off the seamer, and now you got a little bit more time with two coming underneath, okay? You're going to have to work that out on your own. But this is a great way to get the ball to your running back inside of your base offense with just a few little tags that you now make him somebody that the defense has to, has to worry about, okay? And And... Those are just some, some things in the three-by-one game. We can get in the football in the two-by-two two game as well. The easiest way to get it, the football to him in the two-by-two two game is once again, we're going to side saddle him. We're going to run switch on the back side. All right. And now we're going to play call here. It's going to be Ace Brown, 590, which tells everybody that the Super Pack is free releasing. 590 switch, because we do the backside first. Y out. Now Z is on the take two post. Y is on the sale. Super Pack is three out. You've created a three-level flood right there. And on the backside, of course, you've got your switch route on the backside. Okay? Now, so another way is to tag it with lightning or what we call double slants where we can still go and we give our running back a line but a color. So we could go Ace Brown, 591 switch, X lightning, S under. I know it sounds wordy, but it's really, it's not too bad once you practice it, okay? So we got an ace brown, means the running back's on the brown side, all right? And we would do this against the team that plays the 425. 591 switch, so we always do the backside first. So now we got the switch right on the backside. X lightning, three, and I'm under wheel, five, and I'm over wheel with an S under. You can see the natural pathway is going to be right here for him. He's going to get underneath the three, and he's going to run the under route right there. And it's really going to bind that Willie linebacker. The Willie will either take the A, collapse on the X, or play or try to play the S coming under. And if he does that, then the quarterback should hit the A. Okay? Those are some concepts using the running back that have been really good for us over the last several years running this offense. Now, let's take a second now and show you a couple of things that we do out of empty because our empty game really is nothing more but an extension of our regular passing game, okay? So for us, this is empty right. All right, empty right. The ball is going to the field. All right, we have our X, we have an A, we have our Y, we have our second A. We will go on ahead and take our super back out in five wide because I don't like trying to teach him two different assignments. He's a running back. Keep him in the backfield. That's, that's my belief. Insert another wide receiver, okay? So we have in this formation, and it's took me a long time to get to this, you have the benefits of trips, but you also have the benefits of a two-by-two, two. okay? 
And so you, there's a lot of things that you can do out of this. You know, you can go one high cover beaters on one side, two high on the other. We don't like to do that, okay? We like to stay in the parameters of our base offense. And that way, there, it minimizes the amount of new learning. So let's put a defense up that we, once again, normally see. There's your four two five right there, okay? That we see. He, he would even be out a little bit, okay? So a, a play call for us, and it should be empty right. Let's say we wanted to run it as a, as a trips concept. 560, that's the protection. We're going to lock it on the backside because we've got to hold that guy right there. We cannot let him play number three on a vertical. So we're going to go empty right, 560 lock, Z divide. You've not had to do any new teaching. You are just taking the base concepts that you have, okay, and, and meshing them together. And so let's take a look at I'm the A-back. I know I got to get one yard outside the free safety. I'm locked, okay? I'm locked. The X, I'm locked. Now comes the divide, and you can see what's going to happen. The Y-back. He's on a take two post. So he reads too high. He's going to 1159 that right now. The second A back is going to run the seamer. So he's going to the outside shoulder of the nickel. And now he's going to be on a seam read. So if the nickel inverts, I'm looking for it right here. If the nickel carries, my eyes are going to that safety. And that safety should be absorbed by the take two post. No, I'm taking it right down the hash. The corner, he's going to be absorbed by the Z. If he carries and I can't get into him, I'm going to hook it up 12 back to 10. If he plays divider and he tries to take the vertical, then if our spacing is accurate, we should have Z in the sit-down hole right there. Okay. Now, this is just a base way that we run it. If you want to get the X involved, make it 560 switch Z divide. Now you've got your switch route going, and now you've got a seamer with a sit down on the backside. So there should never be any reason for the quarterback to take a sack and in, in, in empty unless it's you know, like a bad snap or, or something that just throws the timing off because we, we've got more wide receivers on the field than they have defensive backs in most cases. And if we could keep this guy locked and not let him play across the midline, then we're going to be just fine, okay? Because when we put our wide receivers on nickels, and wide receivers on mics, we expect our guys to win. So we're going to apply that same philosophy. Balls on the hash. And now we're going to want to work the two-man the two game. Okay? So we got corner, a wheel, a free, a mic is out, nickel, corner. So now our play call is empty right. 561. Whatever we want to tag it on the backside, okay? Let's say we wanted to tag it levels. X read. So we got the levels concept. I'm coming to 15. I'm driving. I'm 10. I'm driving. I'm on the shallow underneath. And on this side, we've got an X read, which is exactly what we would have in a two by two set. So now the X has a hash safety, so he's taking it up. The A is right to the flat now, and the quarterback reads the down defender. If the corner's down, the ball will go into the hole, okay? 
And so in this case, that's what it would be. If they don't like it, if, if it's covered to Tampa and the corner's jamming hard, and now all I got to do is flip my hips and I go one, two, three on the backside. So that's how we take a drop back game with concepts that we already have, okay? And we work the three man side. And if we want to, we can work the two man side. Here's another one. Really simple, you should. And, and because you don't have time to practice everything. All right, we're going to go empty right. 561 levels A option. So now I'm I'm taking the top off the corner. Now we're wanting to single up that Willie Backer. <clears throat> and I'm going to push for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if he's walling, I'm going to roll the out. If he inverts it, I'm going to take it to the skinny slant. I do have the capability to hook it up right there as well. But once again, especially against this 425 stuff, which we're all seeing, and we all <coughs> have got to have answers for it, okay? We're really wanting to isolate one guy in, in, in our, in our in, in other than our run and shoot stuff. We want to get this guy, and I love this play. I, I can't call this one enough because this one dents the defense. This one really hurts him because if you can pick on this guy, then they have to flip guys or they have to bring in another guy who probably isn't as good. And then you can just, just ding it, man. I mean, you, you can just wear it out. Okay. And you've not had to learn anything new outside of your base offense. Empty right, 561 levels, X3, on one. Let's go. We're going to run it. What does it look like against a 4-3? Let's take a look at what it looks like against a 4-3. All right, so they're going, to, they're going to play to the field. True Mike, Will, Sam's on three. They're going to play two read. Uh, and they think they're covered down, but who are we wanting to isolate? If they're going to play two read on both sides of the football, okay? Remember, his first seven steps are vertical. So what's that corner thinking? That corner thinks it's two verts, all right? So he's going to lock on one, all right? When we get to seven, we're going to roll that out, all right? And our A-back... It better, better be better than that wheel. Because if this wheel undercuts it, we're going to snap the post to the hook right there. We're going to find grass. And that's a play that we can run. There's his feet. One, two, three, four. We're going to bang. Now here, we give him the option to break to the post. There, we're running levels. You got it. All right, and that's a play that you can run over and over and over and over. Okay, and so much as the Patriots ran the same play three times in a row in the Super Bowl against the Rams, that's a play that I feel very comfortable running several times in a row. Okay, several times in a row. All right, so the last thing that I want to get to you with about in our short time together here, all right, is how you implement shallows and drives into your passing game. And what's the difference? All right. Shallows is when you have a shallow on one side and a dig coming from the other. All right. Here's the base shallow cross that everybody runs. One, two, three. Okay. He can peek the post if he wants to. All right, everybody who throws the football runs that. All right, so number one, how do you dress it up? Number two, how is a drive concept different than shallows? A drive concept is when the shallow and the dig come from the same side. 
So if we wanted to run a drive route, and I, I still include it in the shallow family, but, but we call it drive, okay? Now he's gonna bring his split in a little bit, all right? So let's say that we wanted to run ace, 590, switch, Z drive, all right? We always do the backside first. So what's the X and the A run? And, we, and we'll go ahead and put our hashes here to give us landmarks. All right, they're running seamer. They're running switch. Now we got the drive concept. Now the Y is stemming outside, pushing for 12. He's on the dig, looking for first available grass. The Z steps for one. He's on the shallow. Super back is out. Quarterback does one, two, three. And for you guys who've never ran shallow before or drive, the super back is always open. Let's underline that. Let's italicize it. The super back is always open. Okay. Now, in our system, his alignment tells him he's right, he's going to run. So if he's side saddled, he's going to run an arrow. And I, I've, we've kind of messed around with it. We don't think that, that gives enough uh, open space over here for him to make a move. All right. We can put him in the pistol, expanding. And by the time the quarterback gets through his reads, he's got more than enough time to stretch that defense. But the key concept here is to remember shallows. The definition of shallow is one guy's coming shallow. The opposite guy is doing the dig. The drive route, the shallow, and the dig come from the same side. Now, you don't want to have a ton of plays, then, then tag, tag, drive. The drive has so many tags to it, you can shake a stick at it. Let's do it out of trips. All right, we got our X, Y, A, Z. So now we, we, we would have trips right, 560. Let's go, let's go, let's bring him in. Let's go Z drive, A corner. All right, here it is. Y is on the 12 dig. Z is on the shallow, the A is on the post corner, and we're out on the expansion. X is off. All right. You can read it one to two to three to four if you choose to, or you could keep it in your regular progression. You can go one, two. He can peak Z because Z might be completely wide open to three right there. Once again, you're looking complicated, but it's still just drive for your guys. It's not anything new, okay? Um, so, so that's a way to run drive with a corner route, okay? Now, so how do we incorporate a drive route with an S under? Let's look at that. Let's get the running back involved. All right, so we're going to put the running back to the left, and we're going to run 560, Z drive, S under. Now, notice we did not tag A on a corner. He'll have the post over the top. The S now is coming right there. All right, and so it's still one, two, to three, and if you've got a really good quarterback, he can peak the post. That's his peak. Look complicated, be very simple. Because remember, in the run and shoot, most of the time, you should be running seam reads in your practices and, and in your seven on sevens, because if guys don't do it in practice, you can't expect them to do it on Friday night. But these are some ways that we've adapted just a couple of West Coast concepts into what we're doing to keep our attack 
uh, up to speed, okay? Um, uh, Bill Walsh said you need to change 20% of your offense every year. We don't quite do 20%, but we'll take one concept, like this, for example, the drive this year is whenever we get on the field, the drive, which has been good to us in the past, we think by adding the S under and by adding the corner out to the drive, it'll give us a real good opportunity to be successful. Okay. Uh, now, so the last thing I'm going to show you before we get off here is how do we run the shallow with the single wide receiver? Because you got to have a complete package while keeping it simple. Okay. So let's take a play or formation, excuse me. I really like trips. Okay. So we're going to go trips, right? Five sixty one. So that tells the running back he's free releasing to the left. Five sixty one. X shallow. All right. So on trips right, five sixty one. X shallow. Z switch. Now X is on the shallow. The super back is out. Remember, it's a shallow. So the next man over. He runs the dig. What is Z and A doing? They're running switch. What's the quarterback's progression? Same as it ever is. One, two, super back three. There it is. Trips right. 561 X shallow Z switch. This does not have to be switch. It could be Z smash. If you want to smash it and give it a different look, do it. It could be Z lock. Okay, there's a lot of different things you could do on this side. All right. To, but don't make it any more difficult on your quarterback. Okay. You could go Z divide and have A on the seamer and he hook it up. Okay. But the quarterback is still going. Shallow one, Y two, super back three. Okay. So if you look at this on a Saturday or Sunday, whenever your coaching staff meets and you say, God, they play a lot of men. When we go trips, they play a lot of solo to the X side. We might be able to pick it. All right. You just go trips Brown, 561 X shallow. S under, now you got X on the shallow, S is on the under. So you've took one concept, the under concept, you run it with divide, you run it with shallow, and you can run it uh, with the second wide receiver out of empty. All right? And he'll, it'll be a great two-point play, be a great third and five play. All right? And it's getting your running back touches. It's making them have to account for him in the passing game, all right, which is going to give them a lot of problems because they just can't tee off and say, hey, look, this team is a base six-man pass protection. Well, we are sometimes, but sometimes we'll free release and go to a five. We'll check release and get him out on a check six-man, okay? So we're not always just a six-man protection. There's a lot of things that we can do here. And with that, I hope I've st uh, stimulated some of your thoughts in regards to to the passing game, I wanted to show you some concepts in empty, and I wanted to show you some concepts that we're doing in the shallow and drive game and some ways to get your running back the football, all right? And and uh, if I can be of any further uh, use to you guys, because we're all in this together, okay? Uh, what we're doing now, coaching and, and teaching our young men, it's, it's never been more important than what it is now and, and today. And so uh, reach me at Rockbridge County High School. I'll be glad to, to at, answer any of your questions, uh, help you out, and, and maybe I'll learn something off you too. You know, practice planning, game management, fundraising. It, it's it's a, it's a full-time job. It's 24-7, and we need each other. And so with that, I'll give it back to Coach Banstra. And like I said, really appreciate him. Visit his website. Hook him up on Twitter because that – find young men like him, uh, uh, our future as coaches would not be so bright.
So, Coach Banster, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I, I really enjoyed it. I hope everybody got something out of it.